Play of Apparition, come through, take that Nessian Horn Beetle out of the picture. That way we can distribute our counters, swing in there for lethal. GG, you love to see it, let's go! And swing. It's kind of bad because they can pump up a Kerrigan Intimidator and then kill her Bosri. So I figure we might as well just minus here, make a couple of attacking 1-1s, one and it's beautiful because those 1-1s one can also trade with the Intimidator. But hey, we get a Skyclave Apparition off the top. They have that nice little blocker, but no more, says Skyclave. Dranith Magister coming in, swinging for lethal, let's go! <laughs> How's it going, y'all? Titan Smash MTG here, and today we're back with some more Standard Event Challenge. We're going to be taking some Mono White Aggro into the Standard Event and see how it goes. Uh, this is post-commentary. I, when I recorded this, I wasn't able to have audio at the time, so I've already done some audio over this and talked about it. But this is our buddy Delmo's Mono White List. You can catch him at twitch.tv slash ildelmo. Uh, this is his list, but we made some big improvements to it. Uh, we changed the basic planes art. That's it. We changed the land. We changed the, the land on the card, the art. But now the deck is way better than what he had it as, so this is actually my build, and it's man, fantastic. But Mono White Aggro, really aggressive deck here, having 4, 8, 12, 13, 14 different one drops here is really nice. Uh, Heraldic Banner coming back to see some play, trying out some Bosby Cat in this list. Uh, Luminarch Aspirant makes you be able to go a little bit bigger if you need to go bigger, but the deck also excels at going wide. And where areas call at the very top end to make you some angels, get some indestructible swinging going on. We'll see how it goes. We'll try a standard event out here, see if we can get to that five wins. Let's go. All right, first game of the day here is against Crazy Tiki Man. That crazy, crazy Tiki Man. Once again, this is post commentary here doing this after I've already recorded the matches, recorded and just couldn't do the vocals at the time. So, mono white aggro. Starting off here, little giant killer, past turn. Uh, nice thing about Mono White here, obviously, is you have a lot of cheap plays here. Your top of your curve is basically three. So anytime you can get a bunch of one a one drop down, and then you just have all these different options for two drops here. Uh, going against Mono Green, I wanted to start off here. Uh, decide between the Aspirant and the Hallowed Blade. Since Mono Green doesn't run a ton of removal here, um, figure the Hallow the Aspirant was better. Um, especially since that, I can put the counter on this giant killer and start attacking here, so that way the Nessian Horn Beetle can't really block. We can start getting that clock in, get some damage. And plus, when you have multiple Luminarch Aspirants, they really start to stack up pretty fast. Get to put two counters per combat step on there is really nice. So, opponent pass the turn. Wait to see if they'll attack. Okay, they're attacking. We'll, we'll take that. 18 all. What's the follow-up play? No follow-up play for the opponent. We draw a land, which is nice. Uh, so, the most mana efficient thing here is obviously the Skyclave Apparition. But it doesn't really do much to like take a Nessie and Horn Beetle. Now, one thing I gotta uh, be careful of here is they can have a Wildborn Preserver and flash it in, or they can have Ram through and do some instant speed damage, so I can't really go too all out on my Aspirants here. I decided to just kind of spread the love with these counters. Uh, they can still kill either one of these, but at least it's not a big blowout if I were to put the two counters on both my creatures here. Swing into 14, pass the turn. Opponent doesn't do anything. Really curious as to what they had there. It's kind of strange for them. It is best of one, so maybe they had something like Heroic Intervention or something weird like that. Beanstalk Giant is just fine to see. Love to see that if it's tapping out in red. So they've actually got some red in here. Maybe a little bit of gruel smashing going on. Once again, opponent swings in. I am more than happy to have that thing get out of the way. And they pass the turn here. Uh, pretty easy here as well because I have the two different one drops. Or two different plays I can make here. So I can play the Archpriest of Iona. And then I can play, play a couple things here. I decided to play the Magistrate to pump it up. Bump, bump, bump it up. And I put counters on my Luminarch Aspirants here, so that way if they have a Shocker or anything, then I can make it uh, be big where I can get through the combat damage here. Spawn plays a Mountain. Got him down to six. Five creatures on board. Don't see too much of a way they can really get through this one. Terror of the Peaks. Good card. Not good in this matchup, though. At least in this situation. And now, since we were uh, patient, reward ourselves with a little Skyclave Apparition. Come through, take that Nessian Horn Beetle out of the picture. That way we can distribute our counters, swing in there for lethal. GG, you love to see it. Let's go. Let's put a counter on you. Put a counter on you. This guarantees that no matter what, six damage getting through. They don't even bother with blocks. Blocks didn't matter. Good first game there. Let's play another one. Let's go. It's game two against Che is my bae. 
Let's see if we can take down Chase My Bay. We're on the draw again. Now, a lot of people complain about that. And so will I. I hate being on the draw all the time. See, that was me complaining. I told you I was going to do it. I did. Like, comment, subscribe. Mountain for the opponent. Figure they probably have either a shock or a spike field hazard held up here. So we play the giant killer, pass the turn, no shot coming down for us. We love to see that. Hoping to draw a two drop this next turn. I would rather save the giant killer uh, so I can use its chop down if I need to on a big creature. But worst case, at least we have a play here. Uh, we draw Archpriest of Iona, which is also fine. Here we can just play both of these out. So figure we'll get the swing of a giant killer. Still nothing doing for opponent right now. So giant killer coming down. Archpriest of Iona coming down. Still is a 1-2 for the time being, but there are, you know, we play some wizards. There's clerics on here. This can be as much as a 3-2 in this deck, I believe. Cultivate for opponents. So now we see the white source. They, they get the blue there. So this is an Omnoth deck. I'm gonna have to kill them fast if we want to get there. Hallow Blade is a warrior, which is nice that it does buff up the Archpriest of Iona. Swing down, give him down to 15 there. Unfortunately, just not providing a huge, huge clock on him for the time being. Um, a Heraldic Banner would be really nice right now. Uh, them not playing Omnoth and then gaining four free life would be nice. But hey, according to that ban announcement, we may not have to be dealing with this for long. So, opponent simply plays a land and goes back to 19 life. Totally fair, balanced magic, as Richard Garfield intended it. Skyclave Apparition coming down, removing the Omnoth, so we get that out of there. Nice little swing here, three, four, five, six, seven. Get them down to 12. Again, they've already gained four life this game. Keep that in mind. So we have five, six, seven, eight, nine damage on board. Would be lethal if they didn't gain life. Escape to the wilds. Okay, so good card, but it's one where if they've tapped out for it there and they don't have anything on board, then it's not the worst thing in the world. So maybe we can get through there. Crack crown coming down. Forest coming down. Opponent seems to have nothing. Again, was really hoping for something like a heroic banner there. That would have made it three, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Like that, that would have been lethal. Get them down to three. Um, again, I don't know if y'all recall this. They gained four life earlier off of their four, 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 four. They gained them a card already. So they would be dead if we were on the play. But it is what it is. Sometimes it'd be like that. See if we can fight through here, though. We still got a lot of creatures on board. Only thing we fear here is old Eugene. And old Eugene comes down. Ruining their day. And it especially sucks because, for one, Hallow Blade can have Indestructible, but it doesn't matter. But also, Skyclave Apparition is not when it dies, when it leaves the battlefield. So even if it exiles, they still get a count uh, or the token for it. So, they get a 4-4. Four, four. We can make a 1-1 one, one token. All right. And then the really sad thing here is we can play the Skyclave Apparition, but it doesn't target non-token creatures. Or token creatures. So we're kind of just screwed there. So we got the Skyclave or Luminarch. I decided to put it on the token since I think they're probably least likely to damage. Uh, but we're in a rough spot from here. Depending on what they do, we may scoop it. They can plus up and kill anything on our board. They can also just minus, minus two, and, or minus three, sorry, and kill everything. They don't really have to worry about that. They're just in such a commanding position. So Luminarch Aspirant going down. Terror of the Peaks. Cultivate. I hate it. I hate it. I'm trying to think of what we can actually draw here to get us out of the situation, but Archpriest of Iona, probably not it. Uh, there still is the chance, you know, if we go a little wide here and then draw a heroic banner or something and they just don't happen to do much of anything, then maybe we get there. Uh, always try to play to your owls. We saw that in the last Gruel video. There were multiple games where I just thought I was super dead, but we played through it and won. Archpriest going down. Sugar, it's going down swinging. Not really, I never even got the swing. Uh, Genesis Ultimatum for opponent. Probably spells the end of us. Yeah, boy. That's uh, eight damage to the face there, and some land, and some life gain. Got the opponent down to three on the draw when they gain four life. Game three against Sanjix. We finally get to be on the play. We can see how this deck is when we get to go first. So that's exciting. C8 Banneret, a card that. I mean, it's a new card, but it still probably never sees play anywhere. So it's one that I always expect the opponent to kind of glance over and be like, What is this card? What does this do? 
Tap land for opponent, then playing a little bit of blue. Then blue, dobby dee, dobby da. Planes coming down, season hallowed blade. Let's get the big swings in there for one. It's a 19 turn clock, y'all. Watch out. Island for opponent, a little bit of mono blue action, and maddening cacophony. We mill eight. But milling eight means they're not doing anything to our board. Really nice start here. Get to go one drop, two drop into Heroic Banner and another Giant Killer is super nice. Don't think we'll be holding up that removal anytime soon. So we simply drop the Giant Killer as well, swing in for six. And that's eight power on board. Got him down to 13. We have a Skyclave if they happen to play a Crab and the, gets in the way of blocks or anything. They decided to scoop it up there. GG, get out of my game, Mono Blue. Let's go. Let's go. Game number four, three, four against Xenart. Xenart Von Duke on the draw. So that's three of the four games on the draw now. Invest a one where that's important. See the Tassery here? Tassery a lot of times can just be a three mana four six, which is really good. Uh, we can't hardly ever take advantage of the abilities to look through our deck because it doesn't use white, which is pretty unfortunate. However, sometimes it's just a really discounted creature, and that does mean a lot in this kind of deck, so. Start off with the Archpriest here, just in case we draw a Warrior on two. We'd love to play that and swing in with our 2 2 here. But they could also just kill this if they wanted to. Opponent passes the turn. Here we got multiple options. Decide to play the Self of Savior first, see if they want to use removal on this Archpriest or not. Perhaps I'm supposed to swing there first and see what happens. 1 1 coming down. And now we get another Archpriest down, so now if they try to kill this thing, we can sack the Self of Savior. What's it going to be, opponent? So the bad news here is we don't have any more land, so even if we were to draw something like a Heroic Banner, it'd be rough. Fortunately, they have the 1-3. That blocks a 1-2 pretty well. Luckily, doesn't kill it, so that's good. You see me hover it over, then I did a little bit of math and realized that 2 is more than 1. So opponent plays a Merfolk Wind Robber. See if they go to attacks here with thoughts that the soaring thought thief. They probably need to to get some things in our graveyard. So we build two. Nothing doing there. Just a one drop and a land. So not a huge deal. Would love to get a land so I can play the small of the skyclaves if we're able to. Get some flying going on. There's that land. What the doctor ordered. Here we can play around drown in the lock here. We can't play around lofty denial. But at this point you kind of got to just slam your creatures down and hope that things work out. And if they have a removal spell here, we still have that Selfless Savior to protect our creature. So I decided to throw it on an Archpriest of Iona, a 3-4 flyer now. Don't know why I didn't swing at the Archpriest of Iona, to be to be completely honest. Uh, I should have swung with that one. Was fearing another Soaring Thought Thief coming down and then double blocks, but then still it's not the worst thing in the world, you know? Another land next turn, we can drop down Tazri. If not, we have Giant Killer, we have Selfless Savior. And they did have another Soaring Thought Thief, so maybe it's an okay thing we didn't swing there since we can buff these Archpriests of Ionas up. Opponent at 17, we're at 19, so we're in a damage race by a little bit. What was that? Why do, I, why do you all watch me sometimes? Um, opponent shocks in there, so they go to 14. Well, I guess they bolt in there. Would be more appropriate. Drown in the luck. I'm assuming opponent has a response to this. They don't. Because, you know, playing playing your instant spells at sorcery speed while I have protection makes a lot of sense. And this is the, one of the main reasons, like, not to not to smack talk the opponent or anything, because they maybe had a reason for this or something, but a lot of times we, we don't really play a lot of these uh, events on the channel, and it's just because I like giving you all competitive gameplay. Like, even if I'm not up in High Mythic because I don't play enough anymore, um, I still like to play more competitive people, and sometimes the, the, the quality of players you see on this thing, and again, this doesn't be rude or anything, the quality of players aren't quite the same as on the rank ladder. Opponent, uh, they counter a Shuffless Savior, which was the bait, because we want to get the Hallow Blade down. Because we got to start putting a clock on in here. This uh, puts two more power on board with our creatures as well, so now we can swing for six. So now, even though they have nine power in the air, um, if they swing out and don't have anything because they're down to one card, then they're dead. Because that's seven, eight, nine. On board. Let's go. 
Land for opponent, so one more card for him here. Looking pretty good for us. They topped that though, so we need to get him dead as quick as we can. Mine Carver. Mine Carver does give them a good extra bit of damage here. They put it on the 6 2 Wind Robber. So, opponent just swings for three. Which I don't know if I really understand that because you're only doing three to me at that time. And, like, it's great you're still living two blockers back, but it's two blockers are going to have. I have two creatures that can attack through those. So, a little bit strange of an attack here. And now we actually draw the Luminarch Asper, which is a very good draw because we can put a counter on that Archpriest of Iona. And then all of our creatures can get to town swing in here and not have to worry about the blocks too much. I could also chop down the Merfolk Wind Robber, but since they can just sack it and draw a card that doesn't seem amazing, I'd rather save it for when they re equip it since they're in top deck mode. So, Luminarch Aspirant coming down. So, it's counter time. Put it on the Archpriest. That way, everything has at least three power here, so we can attack through all these creatures. We can attack all and get some profitable trades. Uh, the 4-4 four, the four, four they can't trade with, that's just a death on their end. Our Hallowed Blade can say have Indestructible and live, so it's a pretty good looking attack for us. We've really turned the corner on this despite the rough start. Not sure if opponent realized, I mean I guess they realized that that's first strike, I don't know. Either way, they do get a trade there with the Archpriest, but otherwise we got them down to 5. And we're going to play the Giant Killer Royale, just get 4 creatures on there. GG opponent, good game there. We get there though. Next game here against Zach R. Very original username. I like it. Zach, if you're watching this, hello. We finally get to be on the play again. You love to see it. Technically two lands here. We have the Amarius Call on the plane, so I love being able to just play spells that we can possibly play later in the game, but also have lands. I love these modal face cards. I think it's a great design of magic, and I hope they stick with it and keep doing these. Needle Verge Pathway, and the opponent has the Fancy Art, so you know they're a real pro gamer. We have Fancy Art too. But, see the Hallow Blade coming down. And I kind of wonder why we didn't put the Pathway in our deck. Um, maybe that's a change we can make going forward, just because on the very off chance that we needed to have a Tazri activation to be a little bit cheaper, we could do that. The one red source, we had a lot of white sources. Just a thought. Here... Uh, so here, if we if we plus up and swing, it's kind of bad because they can pump up their Kerrigan Intimidator and then kill her Bosri. So I figure we might as well just minus here, make a couple of attacking 1-1s, one and it's beautiful because those 1-1s one can also trade with the Intimidator. And they trade their Intimidator with our 1-2. That is a trade I'll take all day, every day. You love to see it. So Naya Colors here, so I'm assuming this is Naya Winota. Lotus Cobra coming down. I think, I think Naya Winota is a great deck, uh, and Lotus Cobra getting put in this deck was really good for them. So, red and white floating. Stomp. I thought we would get through there and get to have our Bosley Cat live. If that was the case, we'd probably just win the game. Not the case, unfortunately. So, here we got a few decisions. I can Skyclave Apparition to take their Lotus Cobra. Uh, that way, if they Winota, they don't have a trigger anymore. And that means they have to hit an untapped land. Uh, and I decided to do that. I, I know these apparitions can be good removal for Winota, but right now this this clears the way to get another five damage in there. That puts seven power on board. They're at nine, so I think that was the right call there. Yeah. So now they got a Winota that comes down, but no triggers for them, which is nice. Tazri, the Tazri Manian Devil, as probably no one has ever called her, but that's okay. Unfortunately, we can't really afford to swing now, which really sucks. Uh, and this is where white has some problems, is your reach is really bad in these kind of decks. Uh, you know, in rule you have Ember Cleave, in green you have Primal Might, but in white there's no way to really just outsize the opponent um, if they have one creature that you just kind of can't, can't attack through. And we can't attack with that Skyclave Apparition because we don't want to give them a 2-2. A Cargon Intimidator coming down for the opponent. I'm assuming they have like a land into Bone Crusher Giant here. Tangled Florahedron. Okay, so no an extra land for the opponent, which is why they did that. But now they have... One creature that can be triggered, and their Intimidator can turn something else into a non-human. So, a little bit spoopy. We played a land out here. Just kind of slough, tough, words are hard. Tough sledding for us here. Um, I want to attack with this. Figure I can. If they double block, we have some pretty good uh, you know, ways we can damage them here. 
double block there. It's pretty interesting. This makes me think they probably have another Winota, but I think we have to go for it. If we get a chance to kill Winota, I think you've got to take it. Not quite enough damage to push through and kill the Intimidator. Two Winotas down, though. And they play a Bone Crusher Giant, so maybe we're actually okay here and self a Savior. So they either don't have the Winota or they're setting up for a big, big turn here. But luckily for us, Heraldic Banner coming down. Very nice. However, our attacks are still just kind of funky here because the two ones can't really afford to attack because they get blocked by Bone Crusher Giant. Uh, we can attack, I mean, maybe there's a chance we're supposed to just attack, attack all out there, but self a Savior and all that kind of stuff makes it really iffy. And of course, they've got Winota number three. Oh boy. Better lucky than good sometimes. That is 14 cards through the deck, and they found their, their third Winota. I think that's their third Winota, right? Maybe it was just two, but I think it was three. They hit an Intimidator off of there, so nothing too crazy, and we get to kill this Tangled Florahedron. They could have sacked the Savior, they decided not to. That's probably the correct move. Here we get an Apparition, so we can try to answer another Winota. Unless I'm just goofing and this is only their second one. Either way, I think Apparition taking Winota is the call here. Now I can possibly swing. And I think I messed up here. I think that I'm actually supposed to swing here. That makes their blocks kind of odd. But it is what it is. Decided to hold back one more turn so I can have a card in hand. Uh, and maybe that's where I lost the game there. Bosri's Lieutenant coming down. So opponent just... You know, they're stuck at four lands. It's like they hit this perfectly, though. They get their four lands, and then it's just Winota, Winota. Bosri Lieutenant. Dranth Magistrate, if Winota was worded a little bit differently, would be much better. I decided to save that and go to attacks. The Season Hallowed Blaze can still attack through everything. This can take them down to one. So they double block there. I figure they're probably going to sack their self a savior. So I give this one an instructable. And instead they just let... I mean, I guess that's the right way to do that for them. So only three cards on the battlefield for them here compared to hour five. They play land number five here and another freaking Winota. So that's their third Winota. Three Winota and 17 cards is totally normal magic. Meanwhile, I know people on this channel have watched me dig like 26 cards at one point for a Winota. They hit a Kenny. And Kenny is terrible here because not only does it give things haste, but it gives them trample. And if you notice, the butts on our creature are very, very small. Now, I do have the mana to play the Samaria's Call, which is pretty wicked. So I can attack here, give everything, you know, everything has indestructible. And it really sucks because I have lethal in the air, and I can have all my stuff stay back and block. But Kenneth gives trample here, so we still die. Um... If not for Kenrith, this game is in hand, and Marius Call saves the day, because they would get uh, indestructible until my next turn, and then I can just attack for 10 in the air with my flyers. Unfortunately, not the case. Doing the math here, I finally just say attack all, because like I'm not going to win by holding back because they can trample through everything, so my biggest option here is just to kind of hope that they just mess this up. It's unfortunate to get to a situation like this. Get them down to one life. It really, really sucks, but it is what it is. Here, they can go to attacks. It doesn't really matter at this point. We have the two blockers back. Winota doing Winota things. But hey, we fought through again. That was their third Winota in 17 cards. Don't even know why I did the math here to try to block. Like We're still just mega, mega dead. Decided to let them have it anyway. GG opponent. They get us there. Two losses here. Not three, though. We're trying to get to at least five. Let's go, baby. Let's go. We can do it. Next game here against Liriel. Four, five, nine. Get to be on the play again. We have a nice little one, two, three curve here. Beautiful curve with both Bosri Ked and Heraldic Banner. This is what you hope for when you play this deck. So I'll play a Plains, play an Archpriest of Iona. Hands like this are really nice because, you know, you drop the Hallow Blade on two, and that makes your attack for, you're attacking for two on turn two here. That also means you can play this Bosri Cat, make your two tokens when you swing, and then the next turn, Heroic Banner, they're all 2 ones. So, very, very nice aggressive start here for us. Shelter, it's, Shelter's a fine card. Late game, we need to hold that up. We like that. Here, drop the Hallow Blade. Swing for two. Best turn. 
Curious if we're playing another Omnoth deck here, perhaps some more Winota. We'll see what they got for us, though. White for the opponent. All right. Interesting. Now we draw another three drop here. Still think Bosley Cat's the play. We can banner, but we can't do anything else here. I could hold up shelter, but that seems kind of weak too, is like the whole play for the turn. If they have a stomp or anything like that, I'd rather them just use it. And they do stomp the Archpriest, which is annoying. So since they did that, I figured I might as well put a counter on this Hallowed Blade, because making it minusing to make a 1-1 one, one doesn't really do much. And then this way, next way, I can put the smallest Skyclaves on if we need to. And instead of going wide like the original plan is, we're able to pivot and go tall. And that is a cool thing about Mono Wide. I know it said it doesn't have a lot of reach, because it usually doesn't. But all the Skyclaves has been the one exception to that rule. The fact that you can just equip this and start swinging big damage in the air is super nice. So here I'm just really hoping the opponent just plays their Bonecrusher Giant. Because um, we can put another counter on this uh, Hallow Blade, give it flying, plus two, plus two in first strike. And that puts them on a two turn clock. So, pretty good, pretty good. And yeah, opponent just plays that. you love to see it. Another Bosri Cat's not a terrible thing either. So here, nice little 5-3 Hallow Blade. Let's Skyclave it up, make it a 7-5 Flying First Striker. That's bigly damage, baby. They're down to 7. That's perfect. As long as they don't gain life this next turn, we can also hold up Shaziri Shelter. So that way, if they do play a Flying Blocker, we can give it a protection from it, unless it's white. Obviously, if we gave it the protection from white, then our Maul the Sky Clay would fall off, and we don't want that. His hands get a little bit slippery. You drop the, drop the Maul. Opponent not playing anything. Assuming they're probably doing a little bit of combat math here, just seeing if they can survive, and they don't. Get out of my game. You're dead. Heck of a clock we put on them there. You love to see that. Next game against Conan's. On the play again. So we're finally going to be on the play after all these early games. We love that. Hand here, kind of slow. But I mean, we got a two drop into some three drops. So I think we keep it. We just hope we don't get ran over by aggro. And they do have those Chandra sleeves. So we'll see. Drain the Magistrate coming down. Mainly is a 1-3, but this does help when people have to try to like escape from the wild. They can't do that. Um, that's really... I mean, there's a few other places it's good, but for the most part, it's pretty niche. Drain it, though. Been a good blocker against Mono Red, so we love to see that. Here, I can Banner. I can sky, Malt Sky Clays, but since we drew the Archpriest of Iona, I think that uh, attacking for two here, and then we play the Archpriest of Iona as a 3-2. Not bad. Next turn, I can I can maul it up. I can skyclave apparition if they drop an annex. Uh, we're in decent shape though. We can also start flying, but it is important to know that if they have that Robert Rich back as a blocker, it does have reach because for some reason a red colored robber rogue would have reach. Actually, that's not in proportion to what the color ply usually represents. Actually. Opponent swings in for two. Fine by us. Four mana here, so we're still in a pretty good spot here, drawing a one drop. Decide we're in a racing situation right now. Ooh, that kind of rhymed. We're in a racing situation. Ooh, ooh. So a 4-5, no, no need to use the Apparition yet because we can save it for a bigger creature. And this Giant Killer with the Heraldic Banner is actually super nice because it being a 2-2 means it can trade here if we need to. Decide to play that land tap since we're not close to 7 mana right now. And I have a 3 drop in hand so we can draw a 2 drop. I'd love to be able to play both cards. Or 3 drop because that'd be 6 mana. Annex coming down. The reason we saved Skyclave in the first place, so that's pretty wonderful. Opponent with the shock. They've got all the answers so far. I'll give them that. They swing it again. Get us down to 16. We keep drawing all these cards so we can just kind of keep in play. But it's actually not that bad. Being able to protect our Skyclave apparition is really nice because should they try to shock it down and get a token, uh, we can protect it not give them that creature. 
Some magic shit swinging four more in the air once again. It's about that time where Robert the Rich may be on chump block duty, which is never a place Mono Red wants to. Spike Field Hazard to our selfless savior. Honestly, the rudest thing. Decided to go ahead, try to protect her apparition now, and it does get protected. Land for opponent. What's follow up, my friend? They have the Bone Crusher Giant in exile, so I assume they have something they can play here. Nothing doing for opponent, though. We have one, two, three, four, five mana total. So Miria's Call, not really doing much of anything. For here, decided to just play the Magistrate and swing. Get him down to six. That Robert the Rich doesn't look good, my friend, when you just hold back for bucks and then you don't block. And we didn't attack there at the Apparition, obviously, because we didn't want to just trade uh, their 2-2 two -two for a 3-3 three -three token instead. This Magistrate having five booty. Five booty on the Magistrate, really nice against Mono Red, because that usually means we'll have to do something like a rule of eruption, ruling eruption and a uh, shock or something like that. So having to do a two for one there is usually pretty nice. And if they do that, then we can just equip the small the Skyclaves to the Skyclave Apparition. Rule eruption coming down. They get their three three. That's a little annoying. Really would like to know what the opponent is thinking by not playing that Bone Crusher Giant though. Like I'm aware that it can't really do too much right now. But yeah, like w what are you doing? What is wrong with you? Oh, just kidding. I'm stupid. The whole re they can't play adventure cards. I'm stupid. I just realized that while recording. The whole time I was playing this, I was like, why are they not playing the Bone Crusher Giant? Uh, because I'm an idiot. But hey, we get a Skyclave Apparition off the top. They had that nice little blocker, but no more, says Skyclave. Dran the Magistrate coming in, swinging for lethal. Let's go. Let's go. That's another dub. See if we can keep the train rolling, baby. Mono White. Next game against Penguin Hugger, and we're going first again. All you gotta do is complain at the beginning. And to be fair, we did get to be on the draw like three of the first four games, so we deserve these. We deserve it, dang it. Drop a planes down, drop down a Seagate Banneret. Would like to actually activate that ability one time just to be able to do it. Everything plus one plus one is pretty sweet on a one two for, for one. Here, not much of a decision here. Just drop the Luminar Gaspar down. Swing for two. Put the counter on the Banneret so that way if they have an eliminate, then we still get some value out of it. If they have a Heartless Act, they can kill that now, but they have Eliminate here, so we actually get rewarded for not putting the counter on the Aspirant. Miss out on a land here, though. This is really unfortunate. We have all these different three mana cards in play. Would have been really nice here to probably play... I would have probably played... Uh, gosh, I don't even know what I would have played, to be honest. We just have options. Triome, Inventress. So we got some Sultai going on. Sultai is not a deck you want to be stumbling against if there's anything like this Sultai bold. Cultivate for opponents, so... Really hoping for a land here because we're getting into some big things. We have two different one drops on the board, so Extinction Event is definitely a concern. I dropped the Bosri Cat here because we can make the two tokens. That way, if they do have Extinction Event, we still get two different zero mana cards. So Extinction Event doesn't hurt us quite as bad. And then next turn, we can still Heraldic Banner. But just imagine we got to do this last turn like in how much better shape we would have been right now. Elder Gargi. Elder Gargi we can't really do too much against now. We can play the banner. We can play the Archpriest. Like, again, we're just one card behind all this. And unfortunately, like, we can't even really afford to attack because they can just gain three life or make a creature if they block. So it's rough sailing for us. However, we are setting the board up very nicely where if they don't have the Extinction Event, then we just use Giant Killer to tap them down this next turn and probably get lethal in there. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh, plus with Boss Recap, we can make more attackers. So as long as they don't have a Extinction Event or a way to gain a bunch of life here, looking good for the home team. Eliminate on my Boss Recap was honestly the rudest thing. That's a tap land, so we do we do avoid Extinction Event this turn. We're going to try to get through here, baby. We're going to try. Yuro! And this is what sucks about these kind of decks, is they just gain so much incidental life. Uh, no land for the opponent, but that does mean they just have gas in hand, four cards in the graveyard. 
So here they can attack. They can either make a 3 3 or gain life. They're a 14, which is pretty healthy. I feel like we almost have to block this and kill it now. Which sucks. Again, I don't really want to do this. Uh, but the fact that it's got Vigilance and they can keep doing this means we're in kind of rough shape. So I decided to do it like this and leave our Seagate Man Internet alive. Just because it's a 3-3, which is a little bit more tough. But it can also pump the whole team if we swing again. So Elder Gorgoroth going goodbye. Another land here means we can pump. However, I can also put a Kamala Sky Clay. So we have a 1 mana creature, a 1 mana creature, and then a 0 mana creature. And again, so I put this on here, so that way uh, my attacks are good. I can tap this down, and then we're swinging for 7, baby. They gain 4 lives, so they should be at 3. That missed land drop earlier is like just such a beating right now, though, with how this game could have ended. Uh, so we're looking at it, though, still, again, in good shape. They have the Extinction Event. They have to leave their token here, and they have 2 mana open, which means they can still have Eliminate open. Which is really rough because I have these other Mall of Skyclave and I can swing for six, but six, as we all know in math, is less than seven. Amirius Call is just, it's just teasing me because it's just not quite good enough. It's so close. Hold in hand, but if I have a removal split here, we probably just die. So Mall of Skyclaves attaching up here. Six, five, fire, baby. It's Lemonade. Shit. Now they can escape Euro, go back up to 10. There's no way we're getting through that. So good game, opponent. They get us there. Good run with the deck overall. Let's take a look at the deck list one more time. Let's see what prizes we got here. What goodness we got in this event. So five wins. Not the worst in the world. Mono White again. We're not expecting this to be a, like a big meta breaker here. 20 gems, Flourishing Fox, and Siona. All right, y'all, so we got to the five wins in the standard event. Not seven or anything like that, but five, three for mono white. That's about what I expect to be. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, but even the loss that we had there, like we had two games where if they just didn't gain all this life they would have had, we would have been fine. Uh, and as a whole, I still felt pretty okay about the deck. Hope y'all enjoy. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Thanks for watching. Love you guys. See you next time. Let's go.